Do you know how many times somebody's commented to say something like, blogging isn't passive income. Like you can't make passive income from blogging because you've got to publish blog posts, you've got to promote it on social media, and you have to do all these things to maintain it. Well, maybe you won't believe it from me. I mean, I think you should personally, but just in case, let's go ahead and bring on somebody else. Let's go ahead and bring on somebody else that has earned passive income from their blog. And in fact, this is a bit of a crazy story. Because he doesn't just earn passive income from his blog, but he took an entire year off from his blog, from his business, and still was able to take care and provide for his family. Let me say that again, just in case you didn't hear it. He took an entire year off from his business and was able to provide for his family. His wife, his two kids, his wife does not work. And because of his business, because of his blog, the way that he had it set up, he was able to take care of them. Now that is what I call passive income. Are you curious to learn more about his story and how he was able to pull this off? I thought you might. Let's find out what his story is right now. So the cool thing is that you've actually already met him before. So this is actually a good buddy of mine, Bob. Uh, Bob has an amazing story. He got fired from his job and uh, had already started a blog. And from that, uh, that blog ended up becoming his full-time business. And it has been able, I mean, just what he's been able to amass uh, with his blog. I mean, not a, we're not even talking like the people that he's reached. I mean, we're talking, we want to talk about income, uh, and what uh, he's been able to do with his family because of it. But, I mean, he has helped so many people uh, get out of debt, uh, learn to save, build emergency funds. I mean, just get their finances in track. And not only that, but he's also a good friend of mine. So we're gonna go meet Bob again. I say again because we did another video before, but we're now we're gonna find out how in the world did he take a year off from his business? That's where it's gonna get fun. All right, so we are in Bob's Bob's domain. This is where uh, he gets a lot of the work done. Uh, I've actually used this space a few times. You've probably seen some of my older videos. Uh, with affiliates, you can go directly to the company and they may have an affiliate relationship. That doesn't always happen though. What's been the easiest way for us is to find affiliate networks. He's painted in here, he's put some more decor, but I, I love this space. And this is Bob right now in the midst of editing. Yep. So Bob has gotten into uh, YouTube here in the past year too, and uh, yeah. I'm just making him buy so so much more things, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Don't get into video, man, unless you got some money. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it, it's it's a good thing. It's a fun thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's so but much fun. It's it's also it's fun though when you can uh, share like you know, hey, what about this camera or oh, yeah. what about uh, this lens yeah. or yeah. with this strategy uh, that we're doing so. But, so how long have you been in this, this place? Uh, I got this, this is a one bedroom apartment for what it's worth. Instead of getting- this is, It's a condo, it's a condo. It's an apartment. I don't know, it was a condo. I, th I thought condo, condo, you own condos, apartments oh, you rent. My bad. Okay, anyway, so it's a one bedroom apartment that I got uh, because I don't want to get an office space. Office space is really expensive here, so I got one bedroom apartment instead that uses my office. Got it three years ago and it was the best decision I ever made because I have little kids and little kids in home offices don't, I don't know, it's like uh, oil and water, right buddy? Uh, pretty much, yeah. yeah. I just invested into, uh, I have like these uh, Bose noise, noise canceling. canceling. Those are amazing. Yeah. Uh, I can tune out anything going on, so. Yeah, it's a good move, yeah. good move. Yeah, but so you like it though, right, the love space? I love it, I love it, it's my refuge. It's awesome. Awesome, well hey, we're gonna actually change up the scenery a little bit, go outside, get some fresh air, but we're gonna learn more about Bob's story and how he was able to take a year off uh, from the business. It's actually a really cool story, but, and just find out how that all worked out. You yeah. Ready? You ready for this? Sounds good, brother. All right, let's do it. All right, we 
we were gonna go outside, but it's a little windy today. We, we didn't want to get wet, didn't want to get the hardware wet. And if you probably noticed, I had a change of clothing. It's because Bob actually <laughs> asked me to be a part of his video. So uh, I didn't feel the need to change for Bob other than doing the video. So anyway, but so Bob, just first to start off, I kind of gave a little teaser about how you got started uh, in the online space with blogging, but go ahead and just tell your version, probably a lot better yeah. than the version that I gave. Yeah. So yeah, in 2007, I started a blog, um, kind of before blogging was a thing. Like you weren't, you started what, 2009 or something? Uh, 2008. Oh, okay, so you're yeah. much behind me. But yeah. yeah, so 2007, I started a blog and got laid off from my job in 2008, ironically from the same company. <laughs> that we worked at the same company together. Yep. And uh, so our whole department got eliminated and I got my pink slip, got a severance package and I decided to do this blogging thing full time, even though I was not making enough money at all. But you had the blog going. I had the blog going. How long had it been going before you got laid off? Uh, about a year at that point. So about a year. Yeah. Uh, and what was the most that you made in a month <laughs> approximately? Well, the most I had made was like $800, but the, okay. the month before I got laid off, I made a $100. <laughs> so I'm telling my new wife, hey, honey, I'm going to set off and become a blogger, a full-time <laughs> blogger, and I only made $100 last month. Like, what do you think about that? Yeah, so it was fun. And not that we need to like, I guess, ruin the surprise. They're still married. They're still married. <laughs> They're still married. married. Yeah, my wonderful wife hung in there with me for it. All right, so you're laid off, you're starting the blog, you're starting to understand how it works. Yeah. At what point in time did it? Did you know, like, this, this is my thing? Like, I don't have to go get a new job. I don't have, or were you still looking for jobs? Yeah. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, 2008, summer of 2008, I start doing this thing full time. And um, by the grace of God, like it just continued to grow and improve uh, and then like income increased and within nine months I was actually making more from the blog than my old day job, which that was our big victory celebration kind of moment. And that was when I realized, all right, this could work. Like this actually could be a viable option. And so we had built up a big savings kind of as a safety net just in case it didn't work, um, but it did. And uh, that was kind of my moment. That's awesome. So I'm just, I'm thinking it took you about nine months yeah. from now, obviously God had his plan, the timeline and things, how it's supposed yeah. to work out. But if you would have went back and if you would have had the time to invest into it during the time that you're still working, do you think that you would have the same result or do you just feel like the timing of things, it just worked out that way? I mean, I think it's a timing thing, but you know, there was no doubt that once I committed a full time or 40 hours a week towards the blog versus, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 hours I was committing, like that had to be part of it. Um, but, you know, that first year, that solid foundation that was laid from 2007 to 2008, like I wasn't making much by the end of that year, but that was just essential to get the thing off the ground, you know? Yeah. So you're, now you're making good income. You're having all these uh, awkward conversations with family members oh, at yeah. like yeah. at family reunions. T tell us about that. Just like, like kind of a funny story because you've mentioned that before. Yeah, how. I mean, for the first few years, I had you know aunts and uncles like just coming over to me like, hey, I can get you a job. If you need a job, I can get you a job. And I'm like, doing fine, thank you. You know, but just that type of thing where people just don't understand. I mean, even to this day, like even, you know, most people should know what a blog is at this point, but. There's still a lot of people who just like completely glazes over, you know, when uh, when you tell them what you do. Okay, so now you've been blogging for several years. I'm kind of skipping probably a big chunk of the story. Uh, one I think has, is its own video in itself. Yeah. But you know what I want to talk about today is about how you took a year off. You took a sabbatical. Yeah. And and we we can approach this from so many different angles, and I think we're going to approach it from many of them, but. I think when, as I started you know, this video, I talked about how a lot of people don't see blogging as passive income or you know, just there's a lot of maintenance, a lot of upkeep and uh, it just why would I, it just, it's not a viable business you know, and all that, all that fun stuff. So that's one of the things I want to address. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think before we get there, I think just kind of talk about what led you to deciding that you know, taking you know, it's one thing to take a sabbatical, take some time off. You know, I think a lot of times, a lot of careers, you know, take like a month off, maybe take three months, six months, nine months. 
but to take a whole year off. Yeah. I mean, they're just take it away. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't my intention. I mean, it started like, well, let me step back. So from 2000 and I think 10 or 11, I decided I want to take a month off every year, you know, and that was part of like tying in this passive income thing. That was part of it. It dawned on me that I can schedule out blog posts and I don't have to answer emails the day they come in and I don't have to answer blog comments, you know, and, and all these are things that I like doing and I try to do, but I don't want to be a slave to this business that I've created. Like the whole reason I got into this was to have more freedom and not to be a slave to a day job. So why not embrace that freedom? And so we started taking a month off every single year. So fast forward to 2000 and what was it? 17. Uh, I, we taken a month off. Normally it's February. We do it. So we take February off by the end of February. Normally at the end of that month, I am like so pumped, cannot wait to get back to work and just so many ideas and just, you know. But anyway, for whatever reason, 2016 had been really challenging uh, and it just really drained me a lot, like emotionally, creatively, on a whole bunch of different levels. So during this uh, sabbatical, you know, I was starting to feel a little, bit, a little bit better, but not much. And by the end of the month, I'm like, I just, I feel like the same as when I first started. I feel like it may take some more time, which I know is like 100% like first world problems. Like, you know, cause so many people are like, if I could just have one day off, you know? And so I'm not at all complaining, but I'm just saying like, that's where I was. I felt, I still felt burned out even after taking an entire month off. And so I decided, well, I'll just take another couple weeks off. And during those couple weeks, I, um, I was talking to my wife about this and we were praying about it. And I, I just realized, I think I need to take a year off. And, it, and you know, initially it's like, this is crazy. Like, what am I gonna do? How's the business gonna survive? You know, a million questions. Like, am I gonna lose my house? Like, all these different things. But I'm constantly trying to test the limits of, you know, what we've created with this business, uh, test the limits of passivity of the income, because we had proven that we could take month off, or yeah, month long stretches off and the business would be completely fine. And this was taken to a whole nother level. but. But that was kind of uh, how we got there. So you pray about it. You, you feel like this is the right thing to do. You, you, t you tell us to your wife. And I, I, if I recall, like she was fully on board. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in fact, like even before I brought this to her, we had another conversation like a few days earlier and she had already like had a sensing that I should do this, to, like take a year off. So when I said it to her, she's like, yeah, I was kind of thinking that too. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we, we've learned a little bit about the, the motivation, the inspiration about taking the year off sabbatical. Let's talk a little bit about logistics. Like, yeah. you know, how do you actually make that work? You know, I can think of like a franchise owner, you know, you just don't like walk out and like peace. Like yeah. I'll see you, I'll see yeah. you all in a year. Yeah. I mean, there has to be something set up. You know, so what did that look like getting it set up to where you could take a year off? Yeah. I mean, yeah, no doubt. Like this is not a, a recipe that would apply to everybody, but this is my situation and how it worked for us because I know it's absolutely different for every different type of business. But in our case, uh, what it looked like was I had an assistant and you know, honestly, like we needed an assistant to make this happen. Uh, but, for me, what it looked like was, you know, practically, you know, there was, I guess, a little bit of work I did over the course of the year. So every Monday I would check in with my assistant. We'd be on the phone maybe an hour and uh, just, you know, making sure everything's fine. If there's any like super urgent emails that came in, she would tell me what they said. Like she had, she was in my inbox taking care of all the other emails. And uh, you know any comments on the blog she was taking care of any like articles she you know we'd been running the blog since 2007 so basically we just republished articles all throughout 2017 so we just took our older content and then just republished it and that was kind of how we did all that but having an assistant was you know fundamentally how we pulled this off and um, in terms of you know like we, you said about the franchise owners like we had students in our course. And so that was one thing I wasn't willing to compromise on. So I had made commitments to some of my students to be available for like, you know, coaching and consulting and stuff. And I didn't want my thing to affect them negatively. So I did do some of that stuff as well. But all in all, you know, we're talking barely over an hour a week with talking to my assistant and then, you know, any kind of students who might reach out. And you did it. We made it. Yeah, And it's like, and honestly, I didn't know what was gonna happen, you know, 
and my assistant was super <laughs> nervous too, you know, like we, it was a whole new ball game for us. Uh, but, you know, after a couple months, I started getting a little more comfortable with it. And then after like six months, I'm like, I think we're gonna make it, you know? So as far as the income was concerned, this was, you know, a big concern, obviously, uh, especially as I'm not working for the entire year. Like if the income dries up, you know, in April, like I'm gonna be in trouble. And also to be mentioned, like your, your wife doesn't work. My wife stays at home with our kids. So okay. it's like, I'm the, the only yeah. income so for our like, family. Just wanna make sure that we are all, all on the yeah, same page on yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, and so anyway, in terms of a blog being passive, like there, there are just lots of elements that absolutely can be passive. And if you want to see your blog grow, like you need to do work, you know, so just like the four hour work week with like Tim Ferriss, I mean, he works a lot more than four hours, but the idea was, can you do this? Can you make it work for four hours? And anyway, the blog is the same way. Like I want to see my blog grow. That's why I don't just, you know, not work ever because eventually it's just going to dwindle down. But as a rule, like most of the one month sabbaticals that we took, we didn't see any earnings difference during that one month off versus the previous month or the month after. And some months we actually increased when I wasn't working, which is just like insane, you know? And then for the year, like, you know, it's a much longer stretch. So our income definitely dropped over the course of that year, you know, cause we're getting a lot of Google traffic and without fresh new content, like, you know, you're not getting as much traffic there. And so, so certain things kind of dripped off and tailed off. But the bottom line is, is that we were still able to make a full-time living throughout the entire year of me not working. Um, and that is why I love blogging as a business so much because you can do the work one time. You know, we still have articles, like I'm sure you do, that I wrote in 2008, 2009 that are still making me money to this day. And that's what's so exciting to me about a blog as a business. I mean, that, that's amazing. The fact that, I mean, one, you took a year off. Two, like th the business was set up to where it could still make money. And you had, just that almost sounds like a fairy tale. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but a fairy tale that, that you've lived. Yeah. I probably, another question I think most people would have is, what in the heck do you do for a full year? when you don't work like yeah. what how, how do you stay busy i don't think you're old enough to where you want to play golf every single day yeah. i don't think you can play golf yeah. um but so what do you do what do you do for an entire year like yeah. how do you fill up your day yeah that's a good question so um what is it? is it pareto's law i forgot what it one where it says that um basically expenses rise to meet income and the actual quote goes a little bit further beyond just expenses it's like wherever there's a void like it kind of gets filled so anyway, it's, it, it works the same way with our time. And I think we all know this, uh, but you know, I watched, I watched a lot of retirees enter retirement and you know, they go from having eight, 10 hours a day working to no work and they fill their time pretty easily. And I will say that it, it definitely applied, you know, and since we have two kids and interesting or not, I don't think this is a coincidence, but uh, literally like a month after I made this decision to take the year off. We got a call from the adoption agency um, that basically they had an adoption opportunity available for us, which was our daughter. And so we ended up adopting our daughter about a month after I decided to take this year off. So the timing was just fantastic that I got to really spend the first nine, 10 months of her life at home with her, you know, which I think so many you know, fathers would jump at that chance. And so then I had a three-year-old as well. So between the two of them, it stayed pretty busy, but one of the things I really wanted to do was just kind of get off of the computer. I wanted to make the most of this kind of time. And so, you know, being somebody who sits behind a desk all day and is typing at a computer, like I wanted to go the opposite direction. So I spent a whole lot of time outside. Like I built a massive garden. Um, I did a ton of landscaping around our house. I basically tried to sweat and get as dirty as I could for, you know, most of the summer and fall. And, uh, and other than that, I read a whole bunch. I actually kept my office that you were just looking at a few minutes ago. Uh, and I would come to the office and read for a few hours each day, um, you know, and just, and just kind of, yeah, just let my brain think and decompress and uh, yeah, and just really get some clarity. That's awesome, man. Like what, a, what an amazing year. And so you took a year off. You mentioned after you took that first month off how mm -hmm. you weren't, didn't have that same drive, energy, passion to get back into work. Yeah, yeah. How was it like when that year ended? Yeah, so um, so literally I just did an interview with Jeff Goins on his podcast that just came out today. 
uh, day of this recording and we were talking about that same thing and and the basically I have never had the creative juices flowing since I began like I have this year since I came back and I have more ideas for blog posts more content that I want to create than I'm just overwhelmed with ideas and and honestly for probably three or four years I really just kind of been burnt out and didn't have many ideas and just kind of felt stagnant and I've just been flooded with ideas, flooded with energy, super excited, gave me a new, whole new approach to the business. And uh, yeah, lots and lots of really positive things came out of it. So I know not everybody has the opportunity to do this uh, on a, a year, you know, and even a month, but if you have that opportunity, if you can possibly make it work, like definitely do it. You will, you will, your older self will thank you. And uh, there's just a lot of tremendous benefits that can come from it. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that interview with my buddy Bob. I know that we did another interview where we kind of took that at a different level, but I mean, Bob's story is amazing. Amazing. You, re you realize that most business owners, if they take a week off, like their business goes to shambles. It's very difficult for many business owners to take any time off, yet alone one week, two weeks, one month, a year? Are you kidding me? Like, it's amazing. It's amazing what he's been able to do. And I just want to show you this because for those that truly want to hack their wealth, for those that truly want to better your life, it, it is a mindset shift. You got to get your mind right. This is just showing you that there are other ways. There are other ways to change your life, to change your future, to grow a business, to grow revenue, to start a side hustle that can end up producing you thousands of dollars a month, a week. The sky truly is the limit if you believe it and if you're willing to do the work to make it happen. All right, I really hope you enjoyed this. I know that I enjoyed sharing Bob's story. This is just uh, just an amazing journey uh, that I know that uh, many would. I mean, who would be envious of taking a whole year off and getting paid to do it? It's awesome. All right, y'all, hope you enjoyed it if you like it. You know what to do, share it, like it, subscribe, all that fun stuff. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.